I'm about to head up to a glacier to test the new Nemo Tensor Extreme sleeping pad, as well as a whole bunch of other gear like the Durston XMID Pro 2 Plus, the z Pax Arcall, and then the Nemo Moonlight Elite Chair. The Tensor Extreme has an RVO of 8.5 and is very lightweight. Once it's released, it'll have the best warm to weight ratio out of any pad out there. But I'm curious to see, once I get it on some ice and some snow, whether that R value holds up to real world conditions. I'm gonna be heading around the lake to the other side and then heading up a gully to the left of that waterfall there up to the glaciers that make up the ice fields of the Canadian Rockies. As we go along the trip, I'll share with you guys my thoughts on all the gear that I'm testing and at the end, I'll let you know whether I think it's new gear to be excited about or is a bunch of duds that you probably shouldn't pay attention to. From here, you can see this giant chasm that's running through, probably about, I don't know, 20, 30 meters high. And then this boulder that's wedged in between. I gotta go cross over that boulder. If I fall down there, I'm done for. That's a chasm that Gandalf couldn't even save you from. That definitely got things uh, puckered up a little bit. Most people don't go over that rock in the middle of that chasm there. They go on the other side of the river and then get a nice view of the falls that are right there. But for us, we're gonna be heading on this side of the river and then cutting left up through that gully. Before we leave this beautiful valley, it's time for a hydration break with the sponsor of today's video, Element. It's been a while since Element last sponsored a video, almost a year in fact. In that time, I've been testing a bunch of different electrolyte supplements from different brands, trying to find the one that works and tastes the best. I was kind of wary of the hype around Element and wanted to do my own research and due diligence. After a year of testing, I'm back to Element as my go-to electrolyte supplement. Element is sponsoring a handful of videos where I'm gonna be sharing stories from my electrolyte testing with you. From punishing fast packing trips to trying to stay hydrated in 100 degree heat in the desert. Element has proven itself to me as the real deal and you can check them out at the links in the video description in order to get a free sample pack with any purchase as well as at drinkelement.com forward slash Justin Outdoors. From here, we're gonna head on this side of the creek slash river, and then around the other side of that cascade waterfall. This is spectacular. This is massive terrain. Then we're only gonna have a few hundred meters more until the glacier. The Arcall is carrying the weight that I have in it right now a lot better than I thought it was going to. It's advertised as having a carrying capacity of 40 pounds, but I was skeptical that it'd be able to carry that weight comfortably due to how ultra light it is. But it has all the features that are needed in order to carry a lot of weight. It has a full hip belt on it. It has carbon fiber stays in order to move the weight from your shoulders down to your hips, as well as load lifters in order to help facilitate that as well. Something that I'm really thankful for with this really hot weather is the trampoline back. It's not as effective as some of the trampoline backs from Osprey and Gregory, but it works pretty well to keep the pack off my back and keep it a little bit cooler than if I had a pack that was fully against my back. Unfortunately, you pay a pretty price for a pack that carries weight this well and is this feature rich while also being ultralight. $400 for a pack is kind of crazy and that's not including the hip belts. But overall, I'm really impressed with the Arcall and if you're gonna buy once, cry once, then definitely keep the Arcall in mind. Just a little ways to go until we get to the spot where I'm hoping to camp tonight. Most people up here, they're staying at this hut behind me, but I'm on a mission to find some frozen ground. And I've heard there's a secret ice cave back there too. So let's see if we can find it. I see some ice, yeah. So I think my plan is to head up along the right side of the glacier there. Cause you don't wanna be going up glaciers. There's crevasses and other issues that you might run into. And then along the flat top up there, try and find somewhere nice and safe on the side of the glacier in order to set up. I don't think this is the ice cave, but it's an ice cave. And you can see how thick the ice is. This is just the edge of the glacier where it's at its thinnest. Pretty crazy. I found my spot. I'm gonna set up camp right here. Looks like a good spot. I feel really good from a safety perspective right here. And it's some pretty spectacular views. The ground is definitely cold as the wind is kind of hitting the ice and then hitting me. Whew, 
that's chilly. I'm gonna have to really layer up and then I think it's gonna be a really good test of the Tensor Extreme. I have a couple different options for setting up the XMID Pro 2 Plus. The first thing I'm gonna try are these screw stakes. They're pointy, they have a screw end to them and hopefully I can just screw that into the ice in order to get my tent set up. But if not, then I have some other options and worst case scenario, I'll do uh, Little Rock, Big Rock on the ice. Not the best pitch of the X-Mid that I've ever done, but pretty good considering I'm setting up on uneven ice using screws that I did no adjustments with. The other option that I had in case the screws didn't work were these titanium stakes. I can just hammer them into the ground and they've been holding pretty good. I've already put one in at the door there and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go put another one in on the other side. I've used the Nemo Moonlight Elite on a few trips so far, and I'm really liking it. It is very lightweight. What I like best about it though, is this adjustable back to it. So you can either put it into recline mode like that, or you can raise the back up. So you're sitting a little bit more upright, which is great if you're cooking meals or just want to be like closer to a fire or something like that. Something else that Nemo did with the Moonlight Elite was they made it so that the case for the chair doubles as a ground mat. So you can slot the case that wraps around the chair when you're storing it into each of the legs. And then you just have this nice mat on the ground in case you're setting up on sand or soft ground, those feet aren't gonna sink into the ground. We don't have any information on pricing for the Moonlight Elite yet. It's gonna be coming out in spring, summer 2024, but we knew, do know that it's gonna weigh just a few grams more than the Helinox Chair Zero or the REI Flex Light Air. Let's get the Tensor Extreme set up, blown up, and I'll explain to you my testing methodology because it's a little bit more complicated than just setting it up inside the tent, sleeping on the ice and seeing if I get cold or not. I do, I do have something a little bit more involved in order to test it out. And then I also forgot, I'm testing out a new piece of cookware for this trip. It's a stove pot combo. Um, it's made for these kind of conditions, glacier travel, alpine travel. So excited to try it out and, and kind of get into a little bit of history with uh, a piece of cookware. So the plan tonight is to sleep on the Tensor Extreme, see if I get cold from the ice that's very cold. I'm feeling it in the ground right now coming up through my shoes. But I also brought the Thermarest Neoair Uberlet. It has an R value of 2 compared to the R value of 8.5 for the Tensor Extreme. And what this is going to allow me to do is make sure that it's not the air around me that's keeping me warm and it's actually the sleeping pad. If I get cold on the Neoair Uberlite, but then I'm warm on the Tensor Extreme, then I know that the Tensor Extreme is insulating me from that cold icy ground. Whereas if I'm warm on both pads, then it's probably the air that's keeping me warm and not the pads. I'll give you some more information about the Nemo Tensor Extreme tomorrow morning. Some details around the specs, some of the construction changes with the new line of Nemo Tensors versus the old line, and some nuances that aren't really out there in the advertising copy that I think are really important to know, because this pad's gonna be coming out this fall, fall 2023, and I wanna get as much information out there about it as possible. I promised Dan that I wouldn't give away too much information about the XMID Pro 2 Plus, but let's just say that if you like the Pro 2 or you're curious about the Pro 2 due to its features and specs, then you're probably also gonna like the 2 Plus. You're just gonna get a lot more room in it. I'm able to fit two wide sleeping pads in there and that's one of the things that Dan wanted to address. A lot of couples out there, people sharing a tent, they wanted a wider tent that could sleep two 25 inch wide square pads and you can do that in this tent. It also has a few little tweaks that kind of take it to that next level. You're gonna have to wait for my full review to get my thoughts on all of those things, as well as where I think this tent shines and who I think this tent might not be for, because not every tent is for everybody. There's always gonna be trade-offs. The stove system that I've brought on this trip is the MSR reactor. This thing is insanely expensive, but it's cool because it kind of caters back to the, the original purpose of MSR and the first thing that they ever made was a stove. This thing has one purpose and one purpose only and that's to melt snow and ice and boil water very quickly. It does that by having a radiative element to the top here and then having some fins and aluminum in the pot and then they also have an innovative pot design that recirculates the air. I think that's what's happening. I'll have to go back and listen to the podcast with MSR on my gear priority podcast but Overall, they have a patented system here that makes it 
one of the most effective stoves out there. I'm gonna get some water boiling and then uh, eat, eat my dinner. This is one of the ReadyWise Pro Meals Beef Bulgogi and Kimchi Fried Rice. If, if the name is anything to go by, this thing is gonna be delicious. Climbed up onto this little mound while I was waiting for my dinner to, to rehydrate. Pretty, pretty amazing up here. Glaciers just like kind of blow my mind. Something that I'd love to do is something called the Wapta Traverse. It basically starts, I think it's about 30 kilometers that way and then traverses all these glaciers, all this alpine area and then continues past that hut that we saw for another about 30, 40 kilometers. I'd love to do that. It's usually something that you do in springtime, kind of March, April. So put that on the list for next year. I'm gonna finish up dinner. This kimchi fried rice is delicious. Probably one of the best meals I've tried in a very long time. So definitely gonna pick up a few more packs of these. Then I'm gonna get into, get into bed and start testing sleeping pads. Tomorrow I'll give you the lowdown on how everything went, how my sleep was, whether I got cold or not, and kind of wrap up this entire testing trip. I will have to be careful with my food garbage because there are polar bears here and I don't want them getting a scent and coming and visiting me. But if a polar bear does come and surprise me, then I have my pink titanium spoon to fight it off. Good morning. It got down to freezing last night, but I slept pretty cold, colder than I expected considering the Tensor Extreme has an R value of 8.5. We'll get into a little bit more about that, some of my thoughts of why that might have been, as well as some of the updates that, ten that Nemo made to the new Tensor line in a second here once I get breakfast done and uh, wake up a little bit more. The Durston X-Mid Pro 2 Plus continues to impress me. I had rain last night. I've had rain on half of the trips that I've gotten this tent out at, and it's been able to perform under those conditions really well. It also got pretty windy too, and it didn't really blow around, it just held down really nice, even with the ice takes as using in order to keep it secured to the glacier. The tent's coming out in October, November of 2023, so keep an eye out for its release at the Durson Gear website. I think it's gonna be a really interesting tent for people who are sharing a tent with someone else or for couples to take a look at because it has all the benefits from a size perspective that the regular x -Mid has, but then you get the weight savings and the benefits of DCF. Before we run into my sleep experience with the Tensor Extreme, let's talk about some of the specs and updates that Nemo made to the Tensor line. First of all, the material is completely changed. It's now made with a nylon instead of polyester. Hopefully this helps with durability. There were some durability issues with the previous version of the Tensor, but I think most of that was around the weld points where you have these little dimples here. And that's where I had one fail and that's where it failed. And I think that's where a lot of other people are having theirs failed as well. They did have an opportunity to address the weld issues when they redesigned the baffling system for the new tensor lines. They now have a system where they have trapezoidal kind of pillars going from the bottom of the pad to the top of the pad. So they're narrower at the top and then wider at the bottom. And this allows for them to layer mylar sheets. They can put one, two, three, or in the case of the tensor extreme, four mylar sheets suspended within the pad and that is what keeps you warm. With that though, you do have to keep this pad right side up. There's the green bottom with the Tensor Extreme and then the black top. If you put it the inverse way, all those Mylar sheets are just gonna fall to the black side and then not keep you warm at all. They also updated the valve. They changed the configuration so that it's not attached directly to the pad. My buddy Jesse with Backcountry Forward, he was pulling the valve out and completely ripped the corner of the, his pad. And I've heard that happen to a few other people. So it's a much better system now. They also changed the material that the valve is made of. So it's a lot easier to put your pump sack into the valve and then inflate the pad. It's also a lot easier to take the pump sack out without just pulling out both valve systems and then dumping all of your air. It's still a flat two-way valve, which is awesome. You open up one flat and then you can inflate the pad and then you open up the second flat and you can dump all the air. And this thing dumps air very quickly, which makes putting it away in the morning a lot easier. The pads are still very light. I have here the long wide version and it weighs 630 grams. The regular mummy version weighs a tiny 444 grams. So you can get a 445 gram pad that has an R value of 8.5. And that's what the Nemo Tensor Extreme tested at. They tested it using the new ASTM standard. Well, not, not quite new anymore, but it hit that 8.5 R value number. And that's what I really wanted to test out on this trip. I wanted to see if it was gonna sleep as warm as advertised because I've used pads that were ASTM tested, but did not sleep as warm once I got them into the field due to a variety of reasons. I'm also gonna touch on comfort, but Let's just say that I was colder than I thought I was going to be. The temperatures got down to just above freezing, pretty much at freezing. 
and I was, I was feeling some cold coming up through this pad. And I'm not sure if that's just because this glacier is freezing cold, even just kneeling on it right now, my knee is starting to go numb a little bit. Or if it's the fact that I didn't set it up properly, I'm gonna have to reach out to Nemo and see why I may have slept a little bit colder than expected. But I also wanna get a lot more testing in with this pad, especially in conditions where I'm on frozen ground like I am right now, but I'm in much colder temperatures, down to minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius. But because this pad is coming out this fall before winter hits up here in Canada, I wanted to get it out in pretty much as cold as I could get and test it as extremely as I could before it gets released. For comfort, I've never found the Nemo Tensors to be the most comfortable sleeping pads. They're more comfortable than the Thermarest Neo Airs, and that's because they do have a slightly dimpled pattern to the horizontal baffles. So you can see as you go along here, you have little raised areas and then little lowered areas. And that relieves pressure points a little bit, but there's not that much of a height difference. So if you're looking at those raised areas as springs to relieve pressure points, it's a very tiny spring. So you're not gonna be relieving a ton of pressure. So for the most part, the Nemo Tensor has horizontal baffles, which for me isn't the most comfortable and sometimes leads to my arm going numb or falling asleep. So as far as comfort goes with the baffling system, the Nemo Tensor line will still be above the Neo Air X lights and X therms but is gonna be below pads like the Etherlite XT and the REI Helix. I have found that the material of the pad has changed comfort a little bit. This wasn't the first time I've used this pad, but I just have never used it under such cold conditions. And I think the nylon is just a little bit less stretchy than the polyester that the pad was previously made out of. And that polyester and that little bit of extra stretch allowed it to relieve pressure points a little bit better. I find that the nylon is a little bit stiffer and because of that, I'm just having a few more pressure points and my arm did fall asleep a little bit. Something that's nice that they didn't change was the softness of the material. The top is still nice and soft. It's not super rubbery or, or just crinkly. It's, it's a nice material similar to the previous pads. And for those noise fanatics out there, they didn't change the quietness of these pads. They're still very quiet pads. Overall, I'd say that was a really successful test trip. I was able to test out the gear in the conditions that I wanted to and getting up onto these glaciers was insane. This is just epic scenery, epic landscape, and I'm really glad that I made the trip up here. I'm glad the glacier was able to provide enough coldness in order to test out the Tensor Extreme. I will be reaching out to Nemo, getting some feedback on how I use the pad and maybe some of the nuances with how it's gonna perform in the field. And some of the other pieces of gear, the Moonlight Elite, awesome chair, the Arc Hall is a great pack. Like I said, it's becoming one of my go-tos when I wanna carry a lot of weight, but still be ultralight. And then the Durston XMID Pro 2 Plus is gonna be a game changer for a lot of people, I think. That reactor stove, pretty cool. Probably not something that I'm gonna carry on a lot of trips, especially considering how expensive it is, but I did wanna test it out and I'll probably be making a, a most expensive <laughs> stove video down the road. Go check out this video if you wanna see me testing a bunch of cottage gear, gear from small manufacturers that are making gear in their garages. It's really cool, innovative stuff, and there's a lot of great items there.